Peter Brown. Good morning and welcome to my channel, Peter Brown's Recipe for a Longer Life, devoted to helping you to live a longer and healthier life as I do. Now this morning I'm going to show you how to prepare a delicious curry, a gutsy curry, cauliflower, butternut squash and sweet potato. I have all the ingredients in front of me, I'm going to show them to you. You will need a small to medium sized cauliflower, about 800 grams. It's very rich in vitamin C, vitamin K and minerals. You will also need a butternut squash, this one about 400 grams. You will also need a sweet potato, about 400 grams. You will need a couple of leeks, which you will fry at the beginning in a little coconut oil. You can use olive oil, but I'm going to use coconut oil. You will need some fresh ginger, peeled and chopped. Every kitchen should keep fresh ginger. It keeps in the fridge. And although you can use powdered ginger, there really is nothing quite like the fresh ginger. You will also need garlic, about three or four cloves, which you will peel and chop. Those are our main vegetables. Then you will need spices. I'm using four spices. I've mixed them already. I have in there a dessert spoon of cumin, turmeric, okay it says curcuma but that's another name for turmeric, and coriander. You don't have to, but I've added a dessert spoonful of garam masala, which is a mixture of spices, gives a punch. Now all of you who've been watching my channel will know that I'm passionate about preserved lemons, preserved in salt. I'm going to put a half a preserved lemon in, which I've already rinsed under the tap to get rid of the brine. You will need a chili pepper. You have a choice of which type of chili, but that's the one I'm going to use. I suggest that if you don't like it too hot, you deseed it. You will also need fresh herbs, rosemary, thyme, and a bay leaf or two, either fresh or dried. I'm using dried ones. Then you will be putting in tomato, either a tin of chopped tomatoes, 400 grams, or a tomato puree, and I'm going to use about half of that jar. And a tin of coconut milk, that's 400 milliliters. Then, when you've added those, you will add a litre of vegetable stock. That's my homemade vegetable stock. I make it every week, about five litres. It goes either in the fridge or in the deep freeze. And of course, some salt and black pepper. There, those are your ingredients. I'm now going to chop up my vegetables, the preserved lemon, the ginger, the garlic and herbs. I'm cutting my cauliflower in half to begin with and then removing the core by cutting a deep V because we don't need to cook that. Keeping the florets fairly large and butternut squash. Scrape out the seeds and chop the remainder into large pieces. When we make our curry, we want to cook them till they're tender, but we want them to keep their shape. Otherwise, we finish up with a sort of mushy mess. I like the vegetables cooked, but still with a bit of bite in them and recognizable shape. Chop off the ends of your leeks and slice up the remainder. You will notice that I've cut the leeks up fairly finely. When I sauté them, I want them to cook fairly quickly. Sweet potatoes, peeled and cut as for the butternut squash. Garlic, peeled and roughly chopped. Remove the inner shoot, which tends to taste rather bitter, so I always remove it. Then chop it up finely. Half a preserved lemon, rinsed under the tap to remove the salt, and chopped, using all the lemon, flesh and all. A two inch piece of fresh ginger, peeled and finely chopped. Rosemary and thyme, finely chopped. One large red chili, chopped. Deseed it if you want your curry less hot. Always wash your hands after handling chilies. You don't want to touch your eye or any other sensitive part of your anatomy because it'll sting like crazy. Do remember, if you're going to make a recipe, 
to read it carefully beforehand and get all your ingredients lined up as I did. Then you won't be scrabbling about in the back of the cupboard looking for coriander when your stew is boiling over on the stove. So here we are with all our preparations and we're ready to start. In a frame-proof casserole, large enough to hold all the vegetables, I'm putting in a tablespoon of coconut oil. Actually, beet dessert spoon, but a tablespoon. Which I'm melting. In goes our leek, and we're going to fry that for a few minutes until it begins to soften. I've been doing this for a few minutes, enough for the leek to soften. I'm now going to add the spices. Cumin, turmeric, garam masala, and coriander. I shall cook them for a minute or two to bring out the flavor. Ah, lovely, lovely smell coming up. Now, because I don't want them to burn on the bottom or to catch, I'm just going to splash in a ladleful of stock. There we go. The next step are garlic, ginger, chili and preserved lemon. Give it a good stir. Now, the tomato puree. Yeah, I think that's probably enough. I've used about half the jar. And now, the coconut milk. Give it a good stir. And vegetable stock. And my fresh herbs. At this stage, I'm going to add pepper and salt. How much salt is a question of taste. I use about a small teaspoon. And freshly ground black pepper. Good grinding. There. Now, I'm letting this cook for 10 minutes to quarter of an hour. I want all the flavors to blend, and then I'll taste it to check the seasoning and the spicing. Now, this has been cooking for 10 minutes or more. I think the flavors should have all blended together. I'm going to taste it now to check the spicing. I'll let it cool a bit. Delicious. Spiced, but not overly spiced. No, fine. Okay, now we're going to add the vegetables. So, in go my sweet potato. And now the butternut squash.
sound. And lastly, the cauliflower. All quite biggest chunks because, as I said earlier, we want the vegetables to be cooked, but we want them to keep their shape. Otherwise, it becomes a sort of rather soggy mess, and I like them still to have a bit of firmness. So, as you can see, it is just gently simmering. The lid is going on. And I'm going to let that cook for 20 minutes. And then I'm going to check it to see if the ve vegetables are done. The great thing is not to overcook the vegetables. You do not want them to be soggy. Now, here we have three ingredients which I did not mention earlier. All are optional. Here I have about 250 grams of washed, chopped spinach. It's been trimmed and washed and chopped. That can be added to your curry when it's cooked and just cooked through for two or three minutes until the spinach is wilted. But as I say, it is optional. Here I have some very finely chopped fresh coriander for a last minute garnish into the stew. And here I have two tablespoons of ground almonds, which I often like to add. They will thicken the sauce and take off any fieriness, if indeed there is fieriness there. Okay, so see you in about 20 minutes. Right, our curry has been cooking now for 20 minutes. Boiling rather furiously, I'll turn it down. And now I'm going to test it. Well, yes, the knife goes in easily. And you see our vegetables have kept their shape. Uh, so, now, as I said, the spinach is optional. I'm going to put a couple of handfuls in here. I think that's probably enough. And just push it down. We shall leave that just long enough for the spinach to wilt. Yes, which it has. Right, chopped coriander. There's about two tablespoons there. And The last is ground almonds. Stir those in for a minute or two. There we are. Now let's see what it looks like. I would normally serve this with brown rice. You could serve it with uh, Buckwheat, quinoa. I like to serve it with brown rice. So here we are, your cauliflower, butternut squash and sweet potato. Very, very tasty. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you'll enjoy making this dish. So I'll say goodbye now. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. See you next time. Bye-bye.